Hi there. The purpose of this video is to show the setup of a Cunique 21X series long arm machine. Uh, we've had this thing for a while. I haven't set it up yet. Um, we're going to set this thing up and as a bonus, we're going to be setting it up and also installing and building a Quilters Evolution 12 foot quilting frame. Uh, we just got the frame this week. And so as part of this video, uh, we're going to put this thing together step by step and show you how it's done. Uh, it came shipped in five boxes and they're kind of scattered around the room here. Here are all the different boxes kind of lined up and stacked up and all that. Um, so we're going to take and set this whole thing up. Um, we've also got the new light bar. We've already got this assembled. We got this a while back. Nothing special about assembling the light bar. So that's going to be about the same as it always been. Um, as an aside also, those of you that have seen our previous videos, uh, the sewing room looks a little different. Uh, we have moved. We are now in a new sewing room in Tennessee. So uh, the background is a little bit different and please forgive kind of some of the layout. We're still setting the place up. We just moved here a few months ago. So a few things, um, all the boxes for the frame are numbered. You'll see in particular, this is box number one. And the box also tells you on the side, everything you're supposed to get for the length of frame you're getting. Now we got the Elite Frame 12. So it shows the different boxes you're going you're, you're supposed to receive. So we got boxes one, two, four, six, and seven, according to what's on the side of the chart. And of course, all the other boxes are numbered as well. My recommendation is when you start installing, open first box number four instead of box one. The reason I suggest this is what you find in box four is this folder at the welcome folder. And if I open it up, there's several things in here, getting started guide and all that. Help for resources to get you started. There's a QR code you can scan. This QR code is very useful. So let's take a look and see what happens when you scan the code. So when I open up this QR code, I'm brought to a screen on the Grace website, Quilters Evolution Elite Instructions. What I have here, are the different sets of instructions to assemble the Quilters Evolution Elite frame. Uh, as I said, we have the 12 foot frame. So this is the one I'm gonna click on. Now the variance between the other two, I assume I just use different parts, different uh, components. Essentially the, the structure of what you assemble is gonna be about the same. So just to show you what this looks like, I'm gonna open up the 12 foot frame assembly and use, assembly and use instructions, let it open up. And right away, you will see that there is 128 pages, which is why this thing is online and not a piece, uh, not a book that's tossed into the box. So I'm going to be following these instructions as I set up our 12 foot Quilters Evolution Elite frame. Let me scroll down a little bit and there's some basic stuff here. You know, what do you have? What features do you got to install? Stuff like that. Um, does recommend uh, having somebody to help you. I've got Janet by my side in case I need assistance. Um, and then you can call the Grace Company with any questions, which I may or may not do, depending how things go, setting this thing up. Um, this is interesting, though. Just as this to kind of help you along a little bit. Uh, I'm on page II uh, of the document. We're actually going to be installing more than just the frame. We're going to be installing the frame, um, a Q21 Elite machine, and a Quilt Motion QCT5. So what this page shows is kind of jumping back and forth between the different manuals to get things set up so that you can kind of do everything all in one fell swoop instead of just doing one at a time and then having to take things apart to go from one piece to the next. So you'll see here, it has me start with this manual, the frame manual, uh, following steps part one, which is essentially put the frame together. Then it's gonna have me jump to the quilting machine manual and have me do some things for the quilting machine. And then finally, I'm gonna go to the quilt motion manual and do step there. And then I'm going to skip around. Then it goes back to the quilting machine manual, then the quilt motion manual, then the frame manual. And it kind of gives some indication exactly how you're going to follow this from one end to the other. So that's how this is going to work. I will point out that I'm going to follow the frame manual pretty closely because it's a brand new frame. I'm going to follow the quilting machine manual, the, the Elite 21 manual pretty closely because it's a brand new machine to us. Uh, it's going to get a little dicey when I get to quilt motion because I've already got quilt motion. We've been using it for a few years and all I'm doing is moving it from one machine to another, from our original Q21 to the new Q Q21 Elite, from, from the Pro to the Elite. 
So there's some steps I'm going to do. Some steps are going to look a little different than the manual and some things I'm not going to do at all. For example, I am not going to install QCT on a tablet as part of this video because it's already been done. There's no sense to do it a second time. There are other videos. There's another video available on our YouTube channel where I actually go through all the steps of installing Quilt Motion from scratch. It's done on a continuum frame, but it should be pretty close to what it is you need to do to actually install QCT on the on the Elite. So, um, so that would be pretty much what I would suggest in that case. Now, as far as the other manuals go, I mean, right now it's only taken me to the uh, that 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 QR code only brought me to this manual. What I'm going to suggest is I'm just going to open up another another page. I'm going to go to the Grace website. This is how I'm going to go about this. So I'll open it up. Okay, then I'm going to click on resources, and then within that, I'm going to click on product instructions. This is where I can find everything else I need. So, so if I take a look at this page, uh, I've already looked at from the QR code. It took me to the page for the Quilters Evolution Elite Frame, and again, I just show you, showed you the 12-foot instructions for the 12-foot frame. If I go to Quilting Machines, I've got a link here for the QNIC 21X Elite. So if I click on that, I can click, I'm going to open up the PDF user manual for the QNIC 21X Elite. And it's going to bring me up another similar document that shows how to install a 21X Elite. So what, as it has me jump back and forth, I will jump to this manual for the machine. And then finally, if I go back to this and I scroll way to the bottom, way to the bottom, uh, Quilt Motion, the Quilt Motion Assembly Instructions, we purchased ours before October 2021, so I will likely be following instructions more or less along the line of uh, this particular document here. Um, there are differences in Quilt Motion between the version we bought and what you can buy today, and so I don't want to confuse with what we currently have versus what I'll be following for the install. So I'll be following these instructions for Quilt Motion. So with that, I'll go back to my Elite Frame scroll down to the start of the instructions again i'm going to focus on part one right now setting the frame height i'm going to scroll to page actually i take that back the next page shows you what's in all the different boxes and we actually have boxes one two as i scroll down four six seven it should be a box seven yep and we've also got another box as i said for the uh idler rail so that's also going to be listed at that. That'll be as part of this as well. This is just really all I'm going to show is exactly how I'm going to go about it. Uh, hopefully between either the Grace Company or myself, you'll find this useful. So we're going to go to part one and begin setting the frame height and continue from here. So let's get started. Okay, so now we are beginning on the frame manual with part one task one setting the frame height and you'll see these are the parts that uh, we need parts are coming out of boxes one six and seven so i've actually taken out the parts i've got the laid out here basically i've got the left leg in front of me i have got two middle legs this leg here i've got another leg, another leg sitting on top of this box and then the right leg on the end um, I have also listed all the tools that you can see that everything comes quite nicely uh, in this kind of vert, this, this pack thing that Grace puts together. I am going to be needing the um, 10 millimeter wrench, the five millimeter Allen wrench, and the four millimeter Allen wrench. And those are all in here. I'll pull those out momentarily. The other thing I noticed, there's actually instructions, which I didn't realize. They're actually in box seven. When I open up that box, these are the instructions. So everything that's on my computer, uh, I'm also in the book here. So between the two, we'll be able to follow everything that we need to do. So, so this is what I've got. Let me get it all set up and then we'll begin with setting the frame height. Okay, so I have laid out in front of me the four pieces needed to adjust the leg height. I have the right leg immediately in front of me. I've got the two center legs, as this is a 12 foot frame, I need both legs to kind of um, to kind of support the middle. And the left leg is on the far end. So what I need to do is to set the, the, set the height of the frame. And I need to do this for all four legs. So I'm gonna do this to the right leg, and then I'm gonna repeat the process for the other three. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget that. I'm gonna pick up the right frame first and turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. I should also point out, 
about five years ago, I put together the continuum frame for Janet. And now that I'm doing the, uh, doing the evolution, the parts are much heavier. This is, this is definitely a much sturdier frame than, uh, than the oak than the continuum was. So what I need to do for each leg, I need to take my four millimeter wrench, which you see here, and for each left and the right, I need to loosen, there's a set screw that kind of sticks out on each end. I need to turn and loosen each one Loosen that and then loosen the one on the other end here. Ah, butterfingers today, I guess. All right, I'm just loosening them so that they're kind of flush with the side there. That, that loosens the leg. Then I'm going to take my 13 millimeter wrench and my 5 millimeter Allen wrench. And I've got two, two screws here. If I turn it around, maybe you can see a little better. All right, so I'm gonna take the, I'm sorry, the 10 millimeter, fasten the nut. I'm sorry, 13, I had it right the first time. And use the Allen wrench and loosen the screw and take it off completely. Okay, so taking the screw out. I now need to determine where to find, set the height of my, uh, of my, of my uh, leg. So you'll see this kind of extends and there are holes. Make sure you can see that kind of sort of. Hang on, let me get the camera angle. All right, you can see the holes that this lines up to. The manual gives a suggestion of what hole to align things in. It has you on page, on page three, I believe it is, measure your elbow to the ground and come up with a height for that. And then based upon the chart on page four, it actually tells you what hole to put it in. Now I measured this for Janet and according to the manual, I need to set it for height two for her. However, I will point out that in the other room, I've still got the continuum frame mostly assembled. So I'm able to compare the height to that frame versus what's here. And we've determined that for her, hole one is gonna be just fine. So effectively, I did this for nothing, just really to show you. Um, I'm going to put it right back in the hole one, which is where I started from. I am going to put my bolt back in. Going to put my screw back in place here. And, and the washer goes, washer goes first and then the nut. I'm going to screw this and put it back in. And use my... my 13 millimeter and my five Allen wrench and tighten this back down. Okay, so effectively it's like nothing ever happened. And then of course, when I finish this, let me make sure it's tight. Okay, then I need to go back to my set screw with my four millimeter wrench And tighten this back down. Okay, so in the end, I've effectively got this leg set to the right height I need to. I knew to do need to do the same thing with the bottom. Again, nothing to do. I'm keeping I'm keeping it the way it came, and then I need to repeat this for the other legs, for the left leg and the two center support legs. Again, nothing for me to do. Everything's going to be the same. So I've effectively completed task one of, of part one. So uh, I will stop, prepare for the next uh, section, and then we'll continue with the next step. Okay, now we are up to page six in the installation guide. Uh, part one, task two, assembling the tracks. Uh, now there's quite a few steps to this thing. Uh, Bottom line is what we're trying to do is we need to build a set of 12 foot tracks that the carriage is going to ride on once we get the machine set up. So what we need to do is take the tables. I already unpacked the tables. They were boxed in boxes. Uh, let's see. I think it was what boxes were they in? Boxes two, six and seven. So I've got two five foots uh, for the main part. And then there's a two foot extension in the middle to make my 12 foot. I'm actually going to use these 
to create the tracks that we're going to need for the uh, for the device. So first thing is step one is um, again we're doing the 12 footer. You're, if you're doing a smaller smaller uh, table, this may be a little different. Um, there are tracks already in place in the five foot table that came out of box number two. What we're going to do is take those out completely and they just slide out. You just see I'm kind of pulling in the end here and there's four of them. Each track has two. So I'm going to pull one and two and across the way here, three and four. All right, we'll take these out and we're gonna discard these. We aren't gonna use these at all. All right, these may be cat toys for all I know, but I'm just gonna set them aside. They will no longer be needed. All right, so that's the, that's the only table that has those. The other five footer and the two footer does not have that. The next thing I need to do is, I've got the tracks here and either side of all three of these, I'm gonna very carefully flip each table over one at a time. So it's upside down. And this is going to take me a little while, so I'm not necessarily going to make you watch all of this. But there are, in each one of these, 10, apart from each side, um, bolts that have a 4 millimeter screw that are holding the track in place. What I need to do is remove all the tracks. So that's what I'm about to do right now. I'll just stick my 4 millimeter wrench in and twist it. And then everything just screws out. And each one looks... Each one looks like that, if you can see it. I'm going to take everything out and ultimately remove tracks. I'll just do one side here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Then I will stop the video and do all the rest. So let me get these out. Okay, so now I've got all the tracks disassembled from the table. Those of you that were paying close attention noticed that one of the quick ways to get the bolts out if they vanish in there is just to tip the table on its side. It's kind of a manly thing to do, but hey, I'm a man. I admit. So what I'm going to do for now, a couple of things. I'm going to get these tables out of the way, only because I don't need them right away. I won't need those to the next step. So just to kind of clear the line of vision a little bit, let me just set these aside. And I'm also going to collect all these, kind of all these bolts. I should have 14 of them. I'm going to need these eventually to put the uh, put the track back together and put put them back on the table. Okay, you saw me pick these all up. So if I'm missing one at the very end, you can let me know where it is. I'm just set them a little power right now. Okay, so I've taken the track off the table, and we've actually skipped several steps in the manual here. So I'm going to jump over to page eight. Now we need to actually connect all the tracks together. I've got about six of these things. Each of these looks a little bit like this. They're kind of triangular shaped, as you can kind of see. These are going to be used to attach all these barrel pieces together to make it one unified track. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn the tracks upside down, I'll do these first two pieces here, and I'll come a little closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to repeat this for all these pieces. So I'm going to turn everything upside down, and you'll see that um, I'm going to these two flanges, the flange at this end, flanges have to line up. I am going to take one of these pieces and slide it into this triangular area like this, probably about halfway. You'll see there's two holes there. I want to make sure it covers at least two of those holes. So I'm going to line that up. Then I've got some, some uh, special bolts I need to put in. As M6 by 6 millimeter, X6 by 6 millimeter bolt on screws. And you'll need a 3 millimeter wrench to put them in. So, what I'm going to do is, for the one I've started here, I'm going to insert one of these in the hole here and start it. Make sure that the hex side is at the side that the wrench goes in. And they're very tiny, so it takes a little bit of patience to get them going. There's one. Here's the other. Okay, so I'm gonna take my wrench, tighten them down. You want them fairly snug. 
what I call, <laughs> but my wife refers to as girl tight. Do the same thing with the other one. So I'm just tightening these things down so that that little bracket stays in place. All right, so now I've got this little piece inserted, fairly snug. Now I'm gonna slide it into its counterpart on the other side. Make sure everything line, lines up perfectly smooth. That's important. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And this is a challenge, doing this in carpet. That's why I'm only grabbing two at a time. I don't want the whole pile here. I'm watching, watch the pile get lost in the pile, shall we say. All right, same deal. Again, I wanna make sure we're all lined up smooth. This is critical because we're gonna have track on this thing. And there's the other. So now we've connected these two pieces of track and everything should be nice and smooth. That's the basic premise. I've got to do this five more times. So I won't bore you with this. I'm going to keep putting them together. You can kind of watch if you want. When I'm finished, I'll come back and we'll talk about the next step. Well, now that was fun, wasn't it? Okay. Um, I've installed everything and turned them over and now I have two 12 foot sections of track. Ultimately, again, the carriage is gonna roll on these things when I both put them back on the trail, on the, on the, uh, on the table. Um, at this point, be very careful how you handle these things. Um, they look like they're sturdy. Again, it's really just, just um, four pieces of metal kind of fused together. And you get too careless picking these things up, moving them around, they will bend. You don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna be very careful with these things going forward. On the plus side, we've actually zipped through quite a few pages in the manual with all this stuff. We are now up to page 15, which I believe is actually the last step for this task. And that is specifically putting in the plastic tracks. This can either be a fun thing to do or a frustrating thing to do, depending on how nicely these things were put together. So you'll probably have a few spools of something that looks like this, a rolled up track. Um, you, the, how, how much of this stuff you have is going to depend upon the size of your frame. Again, we got 12 footer. So I should have here two 12 foot pieces of track for one side, and that thing is sitting over by the box, a two 12 foot pieces of track for the other side. So, okay, the part you didn't see that's being edited out is I actually unwrapped all the plastic off of one of these tracks, only to find out I unwrapped the wrong one. I unwrapped, we had two sets of track, one for a 12 foot and the other for a 10 foot. We don't need the 10 foot, it's too short. So hopefully now I've unraveled the right one for the 12 foot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these. I should have four of these pieces and they should each be 12 foot long. They should look like it. Notice there's a little bit of curl you have to fight. And we're gonna slide them into each track. And this can be a little tricky to get started. And again, be very careful with the track because it is somewhat, somewhat tenuous with all the pieces fit together. It should just slide right in as this one appears to be as you watch it, I guess you can't see, my head's in the way here. Let me get out of the way a bit. Just slide it down. That's better. All right. Both ends should be even. And now I've got one of these things slid into one of the tracks. Now I'm gonna repeat the process for the other three pieces, so stand by. We've got the tracks built. I'm gonna set them aside now because my next step is gonna be installing the table. Once we get the table installed, then we'll put the tracks on. So uh, I'll get set up for that and then we'll move on to task number three. Okay, now we're getting exciting. I've moved on to page 16 in the install guide. Um, we're gonna start putting the legs on the table and turn this thing into an actual table to something that actually looks like a quilting table. So. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start at this end and work my way down putting the legs on. So I have here the left leg and you'll see, it's kinda of hard to tell, but there are right here two holes. They're gonna both mount into the two holes, move this out of the way, two holes on the end here. These are gonna get fastened using two 
M8 by 20 millimeter screws. And it's important, everything we put in, in this part of the installation, keep everything loose. We don't want to tighten anything just yet because we have to make sure everything lines up before we're done. So I'm going to line this up on the table. And for the book, I've got my two M8 by 20 millimeter screws. I'm going to stick them in here. And using my five millimeter wrench, Allen wrench, I'm going to loosely tighten them. Loosen that a bit, it gets a little too tight. That's okay, they're both loose. Now I also need to put in on the end here two M8 by 55 screws with an M8 washer. That would be this right here. You can see that. So now there's two holes on the inside. Gonna feed the washer, like so. Insert it into the hole. And using the same wrench. Loosely tighten. That's kind of an odd phrase. <laughs> so I got that leg attached. Now I'm going to go down to the other end, do the exact same thing. Wherever I put it, here it is, with the other leg. All right, got those in place. Now the only other thing I have to do is put screws in to the middle legs. And I'm gonna put the legs on the five foot pieces right now. I'm not gonna attach anything to the two foot frame just yet. So I've got two, two, and let me get the book. Let's make sure I got the right spec for you here. These screws for the middle legs are going to be the, uh, the M8 by 16 screws with the five millimeter wrench. Sorry, it's been wrong, I'll find it. So, same thing, I'm going to put, there are four holes on the end of this thing. I'm going to use two holes on the inside. I'm going to leave the other two blank for now. Two holes on the inside, and I'm going to put them on the end holes of the five footer. Do the same thing with the other leg. Take the other leg. Get that in place. All right. Everything is all nice and loosely installed. Now, we get to flip this puppy over. And again, being manly, I should be able to just take it and lift it up very carefully, of course. And set it right side up. A little wobbly, of course, but again, that's to be expected. I haven't tightened anything down yet. Let me do this with the other one. Very careful. This is, it says, use a friend. And it's too manly, so. All right, we got this flipped over. I know you couldn't see it very well, but there's where it is. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. I'm also gonna make sure I have this in the right place in the room. So we'll stop the video and get some assistance and then I will be back. Okay. Um... I want to give you a visual for what we've come up with. Uh, I worked with Janet and this is the placing of how she wants the frame set up in here in her sewing room. It's set up so that she can actually look out the window and watch TV while she's standing behind the machine working. So just want to give you kind of a feel for everything that I've done up to this point, just so you can kind of see where things are at since the other video may not have been very clear. As you can see underneath the machine, I'm just gonna lay on the floor here. You can see where I put the screws very loosely to attach the frame to the leg and along into the ends here. There and there, then at both sides. I've also attached one side of the leg uh, for each side, this and the other side. I haven't done the middle yet. We have set the machine, set both frames about two feet apart, and I've actually laid the, uh, the center two foot piece in the middle. So I've still got to put screws here and here and on the other side. I've got that to put in. I've also got to put in screws, these fairly long guys. I haven't unboxed them yet. There would be these things, the uh, 10 by 100 millimeters. I need to put those here and here at either end. You can see it on the other end here to put it together. Again, everything is gonna be loose. So you just bear with me when I get back up here. At the very end, at this particular step, I'm gonna have, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell or not, 
kind of a wobbly table. But that's normal because the next step is going to actually have me fix that. So I'm still following the book. I have lined up on page 20. I've lined the tables up. I'm going to put the bolts and washers in as I showed. At the very end of this step, I'm going to have the tape, the sections together. So what I'm going to do now is stop the video and do all that. And then when we continue, I will pick up again with task four. Okay, just kind of an extra thought here. I've put the, the large bolts in through, this, through each, each end of this thing. So I've got uh, the five foot frame connected to the two foot. And it talks about Mylock nuts. Um, and if I take one of these nuts, in fact, let me take this off for a second. Okay, you'll see that the nut's kind of, kind of weird. It's got a flat, shiny side and a smooth side that's black. And apparently the black side is what keeps the thing snug and coming loose from vibration and stuff like that. It wasn't obvious to me looking at the book how this went on, whether the flat side goes against the frame or the black side goes against the frame. So just as kind of a pro tip, if I go to my laptop, again, I've been following the book, but the, I would, the online laptop, if I blow this picture up really large, this is a step on page 21, you'll see that it shows the flat side going against the washer. For, for the one on the left, and the one on the right is reversed because it's going the other way. So this is just, a, I, yeah, this is how I figured this one out. So if you have any questions about how that actually goes on, uh, the flat side goes against the frame and the black side is what sticks out. So hope that helps. Again, I'll be back in a minute for the next step. Okay, one last thing. I've already tightened the first one. Um, what I've determined is that when you're trying to overcome that black part of the thing, it's very, very snug. So you've got to put just a little bit of elbow grease in as you, as you fill these in. I've still got to do the other three yet. I haven't actually tightened them yet. But just as an aside, if it starts to turn really, really hard after you start spinning it on, that's normal. Don't worry about that. It should be good. So again, this one is just, just a little bit. I haven't actually tightened it all the way so you can still spin it yet. I'll do the same thing with the other three and then move on to the next one. All right, we are now beginning task four of part one, attaching the braces. Not a lot of parts of this one. You've got corner braces, you've got your corner brace A and corner brace B, and they're, both, they're both mirror images of each other. And because we have the, uh, the 12 foot table, we've got four middle brace table braces C. So not a lot of parts to this, but there's a lot of work. because you can see, I've got to install 40 of the M8 by 16 bolts into this thing and then, <laughs> Every bolt that I've put in up to this point, I'm going to have to tighten. So this one's going to take me a while. So I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I'm, I'm going to keep kind of a gist about what's going to happen here. Okay, so I have, let's see, we're going to start with the left side corner brace A. So let me walk down to the right, to the it's left side. Corner brace A, here it is. It's going to mount like this. It's going to kind of fit underneath, underneath the, the side here. And I'm going to put bolt screws in these two holes here. And I'm sorry for the camera going upside down, but those two holes there as well. So I'm going to mount this corner brace A. B is the mirror image. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Um, in the middle, here are my middle braces. Same deal. Each one takes six bolts. I'm going to line them up, as you see here. And everything's going to be loose at this point. Everything is going to be loose. I'm going to mount four of these things, either side of the two-foot table on both sides. I've got everything all kind of laid out here. And then repeating the same process on the far end here, um, with the exception that when I put this brace in, on the right front corner, there's another little piece of hardware that's going to go in. I suppose it's optional, but I'm going to follow the instructions. This little guy right here, the frame reference card hook. This is just a hook. It's just a little thing. It's going to go onto one of the screws. And it's meant to hang, forgive me for walking to the other end. <laughs> the reference guide that came in box four when I pulled out the original, when I, I'm sorry, in box one. It's not always box four, when I pulled out the link to the, uh, to the instructions. So everything's going to be loose. So rather than you watch me do all this, I'm going to take and install everything. Everything's going to be loose. Then I'm going to pick up in a few minutes on page... 26. This is where we start tightening things. I'm sorry, back up a bit. On page 25, this is where we start tightening things. And uh, there appears to be a certain sequence that you tighten everything. So I'll, I'll pick up with that once, uh, once we move forward. So I'll be back in a minute. 
All right, I have installed all the braces. Here I'm at the left side of the table. You can see where I put the two screws in nice and loose for the one brace and the two on the other side are connected. That's true for all four sides. I've got all the middle braces installed, both sides of the table, you can't see the other side, but then each one's got six bolts in it. And if you look at the other side, you can see the other two. And then at the far end, we have got the end braces also secured, along with the all important reference guide hook. Make sure we didn't forget that. So we've installed as part of this step alone, 40 bolts. Now we get to tighten everything. And so the way the manual reads, um, the first thing I'm gonna tighten, and I won't ask you to do all this on camera, but the sequence is I'm gonna tighten first the two, the four nylar bolts that are in between the two, between the two, get those things nice and snug. That's the first thing it wants me to tighten. Once it does that, I go to either end of the table and tighten the four bolts that are at each end of the table securing the end legs. So essentially I'm gonna tighten all the legs and basically, basically secure the table together. And then once I've done that, I've got approximately 50 some odd other nuts, bolts to go through and tighten. So that's gonna take me a little bit as well. The, ideally, when I'm done with this, I should have a nice secure table. So I'm gonna give it a try. Right now, I am back on the manual on page, on step seven of page 25, where I'm starting to do the tightening task. And all of that should take me through the end of step four on page 26. So I will do that. And then when I finish, if it all goes smoothly, I will move on to task five. We're well, at, at the task five, page 27. This one's an easy one. This one should go quickly. We are going to install the takeup rail towers. There's one on each side, the left one and the right one. I've got the camera set up for the right hand side here. So this is what it looks like. Um, they both look identical, but the difference being the right one has got a little kind of extension that points out to the right side and the one on the left side is opposite. So I'm gonna do the right one here and repeat the same process for the left. Very simple. Uh, it slides a little bit of hole in the frame, slides right down in, and make sure that this little this little lever here is in the back, and this little stick out thing is pointing off to the side. We take two of our eight by sixteen millimeter bolts. Just gonna put them in, and use my five millimeter wrench to tighten them down. So we'll do it for each one of these here. And now everything is tight. By the way, we've got a nice sturdy table. It doesn't rack at all. So I'll take my wrench. I'll tighten these puppies down. All right, that's nice and snug. Then the other step, there's a wing nut. Comes out of box one, I believe. We're just gonna insert that into the hole and just kind of stick it in there. There'll be a purpose for it later. So I'm just gonna insert it for now. So that's the right one. I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing with the left take-up tower on the other end. I'll do that and then we'll come back and move on to the next step. All right, we are now up to page 29, installing the side rail assembly. Similar to the take-up we just did, we have two pieces, one for the right, one for the left. Same deal, it's got the little marker for the screw, the one on the uh, Right, right hand side sticks out to the left and vice versa. So what I'm gonna do is there are four screws that, that go in place. So I'm going to, it's just gonna sit on the top. You notice there's four screw holes. I'm just gonna line everything up and put my four screws in. I'll do this and then I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. So let me get this started. Same size screws the 16 millimeters that we've been using. Okay, so I've got this, I've got this installed and put on. The other thing I have to do, very critical of course, is the installation of the nameplate. So everybody knows that this is a Quilter's Evolution Elite Frame. That goes on the side here, two screws that put it in, and just kind of a felt side, so make sure the felt side goes against the frame so it doesn't scratch anything. Okay, so we got the nameplate on. So now we've installed the right take-up rail uh, mount. Uh, I'm gonna now repeat the process on the left-hand side. I'm gonna veer from the instructions. 
that we've been following. We have a take up, we have an idler rail that we purchased separately that we're going to install as this as well. So as long as I'm at this, I'm going to start installing some of the hardware for the idler rail just to kind of get that in place. So a couple extra things I have to do. The first is and what I just installed on a previous step, I need to raise this, pull this kind of lift thing, raise it up to its highest possible position and then lock it back down. I now have this additional part that's ultimately going to be for, for the, uh, where the other rail is going to go. I'm going to mount it on these two holes on the end here. And I've got a couple more screws for that. So I'm going to put those in right now. Again, this I'll repeat this process. I have a similar part for the other side. Okay, that piece is in place. And we've now installed the side rail assemblies, assemblies in part six. So I'll do the other side and then we will jump on to step seven. Okay, this is a discussion of the idler rail. We actually have an idler rail purchased with this frame and I'm gonna talk about installing it. Now, I'm shooting this video after the whole frame has been assembled. So this is a little bit out of sequence. I have had this bracket mounted like this and its counterpart bracket at the other end. I put these on backwards. So what I'm about to do is show you the proper way of installing the brackets for the idler rail. Now, the important thing about the idler rail when you set it up is, first of all, you need to make sure your take-up rail is as high as it'll go. And so that's what I've got here at the moment. So I've got the idler uh, take-up rail set up as high as it can. I've got a couple of the uh, M16 to, uh, 20, 16 millimeter screws. I'm gonna properly mount this item, this bracket correctly, on the right side of the frame. This is the, the, the bracket that's got the little slit in it. So let me get this on real quick here. And use my, uh, I think this is a four millimeter wrench, the two five millimeter, five millimeter wrench. I'm sorry to tighten it down. Now bear with me as I take the counterpart, put this on at the other end of the frame. Okay, now that I've done that, let me reposition my camera a little bit here. And I'm now gonna take my idler rail. and feed it through the throat of the machine. Try not to knock my camera over in the process. I'm gonna feed it through the hole at the far end. Put the other end of this thing in the slot and actually I'm gonna to need to have my ticket wheels in the way here. So let me just kind of finagle this a little bit. So I've got that in place. I've got a wing nut here I need to turn and tighten. Okay, now my idler rail is properly in place. So I should be good to go. Now note that in the rest of the video, you're gonna see me testing the machine. Like I said, this is inserted at the end. The rail is gonna be installed improperly in the rest of the video. Go with it. It's, it doesn't pack the test. It's been installed properly now, so when Janet goes to use it, it's in good shape. So. Just wanted to show you the quick way to get the idler rail installed. So, um, thank you so much. Now back to the rest of the video already in progress. Okay, we have now advanced to page 32. This is a fun one. Task 7, attaching the tracks. Uh, this is another one of those calisthenic things where I'm going to be crawling around on the ground and you're probably going to miss most of it. But with the tracks that we've actually assembled in step, task two, what I'm going to put back on and kind of align them all up so everything works perfectly. So first step is on step one, uh, I need to loosen the two screws on the right, end, right track end cap and shift the cap slightly to the right. So there would be this guy here using the three millimeter wrench. I'm going to loosen these guys. They're apparently fairly snug. That's interesting, it says slide it to the right, it doesn't slide. It's curious, but I've got them loose. So we're gonna run with this and see what happens. Cause I'm just rereading the instructions. I now need to put the track assemblies that we put together on both sides, ensuring, as you remember, we had three different lengths. We have one longer length and two shorter lengths. The three foot sections, the longer ones, are on the left hand side of the frame and the two foot sections are on the right hand side of the frame. And there's a little lip and that lip has to point inward. So. 
I've got the two sets of tracks here. I'm going to lift them up very carefully, of course, because now they're kind of somewhat brittle. I don't hurt anything. I'm just going to lay them kind of where they belong on the track. Just lay them in place. the other one. Okay, this is interesting. They both fit snugger than I would like them to. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this end cap for the moment and remove it completely, just so I can get this to lay flat. I'm not sure what's going on. It's like the track is too long for the table, just by a smidgen. So let me just, just take this thing off. And two. All right, so they're both off. Okay. All right, so now that's in place. Now my next step that I'm not going to film is all those 24 bolts that I used to disconnect everything. Well, I'm now going to go underneath, put them all back in place, but I'm not going to tighten anything. That's going to be after I do the alignment. So I'm going to stop here, put all those screws in, the very loose, and then we'll pick back up. Okay, I have very painstakingly Put in all 24 bolts, 12 on each side for each track. Everything is loose. I can slide it back and forth. Of course, the lip is inward. Um, I now need to tighten things on. And the initial instructions are to tighten the back track first. And so the instructions are get everything nice and even with the back edge of the frame. Get everything all perfectly lined up, the back edge. All right, that looks good. Then go ahead, tighten down all the bolts on the back side. Leave the front ones loose. We're not ready to deal with it yet. And I think the issue I had with some of the length of the frame, length of the uh, track, I had just a teeny, teeny tiny bit of slack when I initially connected the tracks together. I tightened that up and I was able to get everything to fit inside. So I think I'm gonna be okay, but uh, I'll figure that out once we get everything put together. So let me tighten everything down in the back and then I'll return. Okay, so now I have tightened down all the connecting bolts for the rear track. Now we need to align the front track with the rear track. And to do that, we need the carriage. So I've got the carriage already unwrapped. I'm gonna set it on the track. Um, this wheels in the dead. There actually is a front and a rear to this. I don't know if you can see on the camera. There's front and this rear listed. So you know which way is which. Our continuum carriage, if I had that, I never noticed it. So it's kind of interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is align the track. So I'm gonna start at the far right end and somewhat push down and make sure all the wheels are in alignment. So I'm gonna push down and go through the process of aligning so that the front and the rear tracks are aligned perfectly. And I may have to do this a few times. It's like the tracks are too far apart and I can't get the front track to go this way any further. So I may have to bring the back track in this way. So you know, that's what I'm gonna try. I am, I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, you want the track to roll smoothly and you want it to be level. You don't want it to just roll. I mean, this one's actually looking pretty good right now. I can grab it, but I wanna make sure that all the wheels are in contact with the track. So what I'm gonna do is I'll stop the video here. I am going to do some adjustments on the rear track I may loosen it, pull it inward a little bit, and do some experimentation, and then I'll let you know if I made out in a second. So, see you in a bit. Okay, um, while you were away, I loosened all the bolts on the rear track, got everything to align, so the rear track isn't quite to the edge. Now it's pulled in just a little bit, but I went and pushed down all the way to the end, got it all to line up. I have now since tightened everything in the back, rolled it again, and I'm getting the front to align. And I've ensured that all eight wheels, the four in the front and the four in the back, are in contact with the track, which is what I want. And I'm also pleased as I'm kind of playing with this, I've actually got a pretty level frame, at least as far as I know. I can let go of the carriage and it rolls pretty easy. And it doesn't want to roll on its own. So that tells me that this frame is fairly level. So I'm happy about that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna complete this step. I'm gonna, I haven't tightened those two bolts on the end here that we loosened earlier that I took off. I've since put them back on. Tighten those down. Tighten everything across the front. Then I will be done with step seven. And then we're down to the final step for step eight for installing the track. And that's putting the carriage channel lock on. We'll do that. 
and then we'll be done with this and then we can move on to some other piece of this thing to set up. Hold tight. All right, so now that we've got the track in place, we have one final step for part one of the frame installation, and that is installing the carriage channel lock onto the carriage. This will prevent the carriage from rolling if you wish to have it not move from left to right, come up with a straight stitch. So we have advanced to page 37 in the, in the uh, installation. Uh, we need to, on the right hand side of the carriage, remove the right rear facing wheel with a four millimeter wrench. So I'm gonna do that. It comes right off. Okay, we are gonna discard the screw. We don't need the screw anymore at this point. Right here, I'm gonna keep the wheel. And what I have here is the channel lock. I have a bit of a delay when I look at my screen. So here's the channel lock. There is a six by 20 millimeter screw to keep with the hardware that I've got inserted. I'm gonna take that and insert the wheel do that as well. I'm gonna take and reinstall this on the carriage. Okay, so that's in place. And what this will do is this will keep the carriage from go going from left to right. And there's a bit of an adjustment to this. There's a little screw you can turn there if you need to uh, just get the tension of that right. All right, let's go with it. That works good. All right. So now we've got the carriage lock in place. So now we have completed all of part one of the frame installation. We've got the carriage lock in place. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna move to another manual and move forward with something more exciting to put together. So stay tight and we'll be back in a second. Okay, this is the part that I'm getting excited about. Uh, now that we've got most of the frame set up, we're actually gonna unbox the CUNIC 21X series sewing machine, cut long arm machine. Um, I'm actually filming this for no other reason than to show how it is packed. This is a box, Grace will tell you, don't throw it out. Keep everything, keep the packaging, keep all the styrofoam, keep it all. Occasionally these machines have to get sent back to Grace to get worked on. It has happened before, it's happened to us, it's happened to friends we know that have these things. You want to have the exact shipping box and it makes it so much easier to pack up and send as opposed to coming up with your own stuff and hoping it gets there in one piece. So all that to say, I just want to document exactly how this thing is packed so I know that if I have to pack it up again and we have to ship it back to, to Salt Lake City, I know I go, how to go about it. So with no further ado, I've already loosened up all the staples, we we'll lift the cover off. All right, so we lifted the cover off. Right away, there is a piece of stock cardboard on top. Let me set that inside. We have styrofoam and plastic wrap. That's interesting. It looks like this is taped on, so let me do the tape at each end. All the tape appears to come off. All right, that's all. I don't know how important the plastic is. I'm just documenting, because if I want to get it back in plastic, I will. Now we have a thin sheet of styrofoam within the plastic. So take that up. And now what we apparently have are a whole bunch of very well labeled boxes to show where, what everything is. So we have here, as I'm staring at it from right to left, top, we have the thread stand hardware box, the wheelbase hardware box, Going down, the display box, it has a very nice display. The tools box. We have the wheels. I've been familiar with this with the 21 Pro we already have, so I know how to deal with that. We've got the power cord and oil bottle. The encoder, the encoder is what we're gonna need for the next step, so we're gonna need these pretty quickly. And of course, the wheelbase cover box. What I think I can do is, yeah, I can just lift this whole piece of styrofoam up completely. That was convenient, I'll just set this off to the side. All right, and then what we have here, I don't know how you can see it, here is the CUNIC 21X Elite. Uh, the machine is kind of laying in its own little cardboard cutout here. We have this very silicone gel packs to keep everything dry. You'll see these scattered throughout the box. We have 
a box of something in the product information box. I bet you this is the installation instructions. So we'll grab that when we're ready. We have a box in the middle that is a sample, a finesse sample thread kit. Uh, that's, I suspect that's marketing information if you want to start using the finesse thread. Um, we have the actual machine itself, um, the spindles for the, for, the, uh, for the thread that you can put on top of the machine. As part of the installation, we're going to put this machine together eventually. Um, then we have the actual handlebars, the handlebars itself with a piece of styrofoam in the middle. So this is how it's all packed up. Um, like I said, the first thing I'm going to need is the encoder. So I'm going to grab that box first, uh, get that ready to go, and then we will set up an encoder. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've uncreated the uh, Cunic machine. Um, I want to start setting up the carriage. And I indicated that I was going to do the encoders first. I lied. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to get a little weird when it comes to QCT, quilt motion, because we're not installing it new. We're actually moving it from another machine. So what's going to be easiest for me, um, before I put the encoder on, I want to put the motor plate in. The motor plate is the aspect of QCT that actually drives the machine back and forth and from left to right. And what I've got on the floor here is the carriage off of our old continuum. And inside there, I've already got the motor plate installed. What I want to do is just simply move it from the old frame, the old carriage to the new carriage. It's going to be a pretty simple process. And again, I've got a video that shows how to install all this from square one. All essentially I'm going to do is I've got five screws that put it in place. I'm just gonna take it off of this carriage and put it onto this carriage. Uh, I'm gonna do that. There's also a bracket that goes on the back. I'm gonna do this as well. This is a bracket that holds the power strip that everything is gonna plug into, the sewing machine, the motor plate, and the actual Windows tablet that's actually going to be uh, be used. Again, just two screws, put it in place, can put that bracket on. So I wanna take care of that first before I start messing around with the, uh, with the encoders. Um, so I'm gonna take care of that right now, and then when I finish, I will get back to the encoder piece. So hang, hang tight. All right, so I have moved the motor plate and the bracket for the uh, extension cord for the bar strip to the new uh, carriage. I've now moved to the CUNIC 21X Elite Instruction Manual, Part 1, Task 1, Page 5, Installing the Lower Encoder. And this is the only task that's required uh, in this particular part. So I need a couple of things. I need my encoder box. And within the encoder box, I need to pull out the lower encoder. And you see there's two encoders in the box. The, bo the one I actually want is the one with the black spring that's kind of be between it and the mount. So that's this one with the little, it's got the little green tag here, I believe is the one I want. Uh, yes, I'm gonna pull this out. Okay, here's, here's my little encoder. I'm also in the tools box. I need, well now I've already got the four millimeter wrench from the frame, so the, with the brown handle, I've already got that. I'm opening up the box and pulling out four millimeters. So if you don't have the one from the, uh, from the uh, frame, you've got another one to actually work with. So here are the two wrenches I need and my lower encoder. So what I need to do on the rear, the left rear wheel from the bottom of the carriage, I need to take off the inside wheel. And I used a four millimeter wrench for that, so hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna reach in. Take the bolt out, just like it's similar to what I did with the, uh, with the uh, carriage lock, and take the wheel off. Then I'm gonna take my encoder, the encoder here. I am, ec get my hand out of the way there. I'm gonna kind of open up the cord and unwind it so we can get at it. Okay, now if you take a look at this thing, if you're not familiar with it, um, this thing is going to ride on the track with the wheel along with this other wheel that this encoder is going to control stitch length as the carriage goes from left to right. We're going to do another encoder in the machine eventually that's going to do it from back and forth to ensure we've got um, 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 consistent stitch length. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wheel I just took off. I don't need the screw anymore. So I'm just going to put the wheel on and I'm going to put this back in place. Actually, before I do that, there's one other step I have to do. There is a lock, a lock nut right there. It's kind of on top of the wheel. I need to loosen that. 
you can see it there. I'll just turn this a little bit so it's loose. All right. So that kind of goes back and forth. It's it kind of goes plays back and forth. There. No, it's kind of hard to see with my finger in the way there. How's that? There we go. All right. So now that I've loosened it, now I'm going to take my four millimeter and turn it so that the wheel is inward. Um, that little white thing is off to the off to the left. All right. So I've got the wheel in place. The other thing I want to do is this little lock spring. I want to take my my two and a half millimeter wrench. Tilt this up, this little spring here at a 90 degree angle, and then I'm going to tighten it back down. So it kind of locks in place. This has the impact of ensuring that this little wheel on the right there makes good contact with the actual track because this is going to control stitch length. And that's looking perfect. I'm looking at it from the side here and I don't see any issues at all. So I'm good to go. So I've got the encoder installed. That's the only, the only step we have to do for now for part one of task one of the machine. So I'm going to stop the video and look up the next instruction and then we'll pick up again. All right, so now we're moving back to quilt motion at this point. And like I said, I'm going to play fast and loose with the quilt motion instructions because, because we were, we're just moving it from another machine. Um, I've already, the next step is to actually run the long belt through the motor plate and stretch it from one end of the frame to the other. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I've already got the belt threaded. Um, one thing you'll notice if you've done this before, the belt's looking relatively flat and straight because we've had this thing for a long time and it's all stretched out. If you're doing dealing with a brand new QCT installation, the belt's got a lot of curl to it and it can make it a lot, make it fairly challenging to install. Uh, this makes it fairly easy because it's flat. So um, I've got the actual brackets that are used to secure the belt on the left side of the machine. So what I'm going to do is, and what's beautiful about the uh, about the evolution, the mounts for these brackets are already here. Uh, with the continuum, I had a separate bracket I had to put in. I had to line it all up so it was perfect and straight. Here it's ready to go. So all I need to do is take my long belt and fit the ridges in and line the holes up. I then take the piece that goes on top and put it in place to kind of secure it. There we go. And again, I just want to stick it down a little. There we go. Now I got my two my two screws from the old the old setup. I'm just gonna feed them in place, secure them at, at the left side. I already got one started here. Let me get my three millimeter and tighten it down. Okay, so I've got the long belt secured on the left side of the machine. Now let's move to the right side. Okay, now I've moved to the right side of the machine, and at this point I've got the simple bracket that's going to be used to tighten and loosen the belt. This belt just just, just slides right on. So I'm just going to do the same thing and put my screws in place. Okay, so the bracket's in place. Let's get my wrench out of here. There we go. Now I just have to simply feed the belt through. And that's done by turning, by loosening the knob on the left and turning the knob on the right to feed the belt through. And they always say make it girl tight. So I make it fairly, fairly snug and use the other side to tighten it down. And now I've got the long belt installed on the uh, on the uh, on the carriage for for our QCT. So that piece is done. Uh, we'll go back to the instructions and see what happens next. All right, we are now back to working on the machine. We are in part two of the Outlet Box Assembly, task two, installing the wheels. Um, now it's kind of clever how they did this. Um, the wheels were actually in the packaging, the top piece of the thing. Um, I took the machine out of the bottom piece and it actually fits into the styrofoam perfectly. And the holes pretty much align with the wheel. So all I really have to do is put the bolts that came out of the wheelbase hardware box. Just four bolts in there, two shoulder bolts and two regular bolts and using the four millimeter Allen wrench, I am going to put the wheels on the machine. So I will do that right now. We'll do the rear wheel first. The rear wheel uses the regular bolts. So I'm just going to feed these in. And it does recommend, it says use the Allen wrench, the L-shaped Allen wrench, as opposed to one with a pretty brown handle, simply because there's just not enough room in here to actually manipulate the uh, the berm handle. So, all right, there's one. 
I'll do the one on the other side here. Off camera. Let me just do the other one on the front. And the front bolts are a little different. They're what they call shoulder bolts. They've got a slightly different look. As you see, it has a big shoulder on it. Let's feed that through. And I may have to adjust it a little bit here. There we go. Come in. That should go in a little quicker. All right. And I got one to do on the other side. So let me get those in. Um, there's one more step I have to do after this before I can put it on the frame. So let me get these bolts in and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, um, so the wheels went on without a hitch. You'll see I've got the machine laying on its side now. This is another QCT modification. I need to put the short belt bracket on the bottom of the machine. And again, I pulled this off of the old uh, 21 machine that we had, the Pro, and I'm gonna mount it here. I've got the same hardware. Um, this goes on pretty simple. I just feed the bolts through. There's a couple of holes on the bottom, which should hopefully feed into. I'll get this one started. And there's a short belt that's involved in this as well that mounts. I've already got the belt threaded on the motor plate. So it's really just a matter of me tightening these things down and then we're ready to put the machine on the carriage. So let me do that and we'll return. All right, uh, we have got the machine on the frame. It's looking pretty good. Rolls back and forth nice. I had to make a few adjustments and it's a pretty simple thing to do. You just take the four millimeter wrench. If all four wheels aren't actually touching, all right, both wheels neither end, just loosen this thing here, slide that back and forth and it should slide on its own from the weight of the machine and then just tighten it back down and there's one of these for each leg. Pretty simple and now everything is pretty much in place. So we have the machine on the frame. I'm getting pretty good at bench pressing these things, 70 pounds a piece. Um, I've also got the short belt for QCT installed, both the front and the back. And again, I got another video that shows how to do this. Um, the short belt is always upside down from the long belt, so everything's installed the way it's supposed to. Um, looking good, so we'll continue on with the next step I have to follow, and then we'll pick things up. All right, we are now back to the frame manual. A relatively simple step for part two, task nine, installing the machine channel lock. Very similar to what we just did on the carriage, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the machine. So we are going to remove the wheel off of the machine, discard the screw, adjustment, that seems to work. I think it's held in place, we'll try that. And again, I may be tweaking this. All right, a little bit more playing around here. And I think we're good. Again, I may have to fuss with it a little bit, but it appears to be functional. And uh, both of these appear to be in good shape. So I'm good to go with the channel lock. Let's move on to the next step. All right, we're moving back to the frame manual now. We got several tasks to, pop, to, to deal with with part three. These should go fairly quickly. The first one is installing the wheel covers. Again, there's a box. Jump over to the other side here that says wheel cover box. And these are the wheel covers. Pretty simple and straightforward. All the hardware is in the box. You just simply put this in place. And note that in this wheel cover, there's one for the left and one for the right. If you put them on the wrong sides, it'll be obvious. Make sure it goes over the ridge. There's a little ridge on either side here. Make sure it goes over that ridge like that. Take the hardware put them in and the wheel covers are done. So that's that piece. Uh, we'll put those in and then move on to the next step. Okay, we have moved on to task four of part three, putting the handlebars on. All right, so here are my handlebars and uh, they go on pretty simply. There is a screw behind the head that I loosen with my four millimeter. Take it out. This little cover tips, tips down. You take the handlebars. You feed them into this slot. And of course, as you're putting this in, adjust the handlebars to a comfortable height, whatever feels appropriate. And then you can take these little brackets here and adjust the angle of the handles, however you want them to be. And of course, they'll get adjusted a few times once Janet gets the, starts using it. And then there's two plugs. Each plug plugs into a little port on the bottom here. One on the left, one on the right. And then it's got the handlebars in place. So 
we should be good there. Um, I will stop the video and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we are now to task five, installing the display. Here's the display. Again, it's its own little separate box. One thing that kind of faked me out a little bit, this little bracket turns really, really hard. Don't let that throw you off. It does turn. You just have to put a lot of effort to it. So you have to kind of straighten it out. But once you do, it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of mount it. There's two mounting holes on the top. It comes with two screws. I'll just put them both in here. Use a three millimeter wrench to tighten it down. All right, and then there's a little cable that connects this thing to the machine. So the top part of the cable plugs in the top like this. The bottom part plugs in underneath in the back here. And I may have to tip it up to get at it. Voila, and now the, the display is set up. So that takes care of that step. We'll move on momentarily to the next one. I've only got, got very little, little juice left in my battery, but I'm hoping there's enough juice to install the thread stand. Again, this is another simple thing. It bolts on the side of the machine, two screws, four millimeter wrench. You see there's a couple holes. Let's see if I can do this before my battery, before my battery runs out. I'll get the first one started. And we'll get its buddy next door started. All right, thread stands in place. Uh, let's work on the encoder next. Be back in a second. All right, now we're moving on to installing the upper encoder on the machine. Same as process the lower encoder. We're gonna take the wheel off on the left rear. Don't need the screw anymore. Here we've got the encoder. This has got the silver spring on it. So that's how we know the difference between the two. And it also has the word upper. We're gonna put the wheel back on. And of course we have the little set screw. I need my little two and a half millimeter to loosen that. Okay, take it. This, the wheel should be on the inward side. We'll put this in place. Take our four millimeter wrench. All right, we have that in place. Let's take the set screw, set that up to 90 degrees. Tighten it down. Then want to over tighten it. You get to the, you almost strip the screw. And again, that wheel should be, once I get the cord out of the way, should have good contact with that upper track, and it is. And now we have the upper encoder installed. Uh, that was smooth and painless. Let's move on to the next step. All right, forgive the bizarre camera angle, but the next thing I'm going to install is the Magnifique magnifying glass. Um, it's kind of a neat little thing. Um, I'm, looking at, I'm looking up at the bottom of the head, and you can see here's the needle shaft here, and here's the bobbin and all that. This little, this little bracket fits in this little rectangular slot, and there's one, there's a little screw that fits in place, so I'm gonna take this thing using my three millimeter Allen wrench. We are going to insert, it's a pretty simple bracket, and that's really all it is on a 20. If you take a look at this, there's a whole bunch of other instructions, but for a 21, it's really just this thing going in. So I'm going to just tighten this down. Okay, so I'll bring the camera back around. Now at this point, you can choose between a 2X, a 3.5X, and a 5X magnification. And it's pretty straightforward. You just take, let's say I've just got a, I don't even know which one this is. I just take it at random. It fits in there with a magnet and stays in place. So now you can either have it in the way or not. You can look down and ideally you can see what you need to do to thread your needle. There's that, there's that one size. It just pops out if you want another one. I pick a different one here and stick that in. You see I got different magnification. Then I can pull that out and do the third one. I'm being kind of tidy and leaving all the plastic in place until Janet decides which one she wants. So that was a pretty easy install. That's the magnification, so I've got that in place. Uh, we'll move on to the next step in just a moment. Okay, uh, we're in the home stretch now. We are actually back to the frame manual, part three, task 10. We are gonna assemble a series of 12-foot rails. And they're all gonna assemble about the same way. I'm gonna do the first one here. 
I'll do two more kind of off camera that are very similar and then I'll do the idler rail, which again is a separate thing that we have. So I'm gonna start with the star rail first, which is actually step one. And I'm working off my wife's cutting table um, simply because it gives me enough room to work. So I'm gonna take the end of the rail, it's got the sprocket into this, I'm gonna lay it down on the table, note the two holes that I have kind of sticking up here. I've got a couple of couplers that are gonna kind of create this all together to make it a 12 foot rail. I'm gonna do, I'm going to slide one of these couplers in. And notice that each coupler has got like little screw things, I guess, for lack of a description. This is what's gonna get used to kind of lock everything in place. So what I'm gonna do is slide it in so that the holes, two of them line up. Then I'm gonna take my four millimeter wrench and turn each one counterclockwise. It's kind of counterintuitive, but effectively I'm unscrewing these things so that, I mean, screw them like they're snug, and this will actually hold the piece in place. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do both of them here, get them all snug. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna take my two foot rail, same thing, slide it in. If I've done it right, yes, everything lines up perfectly. So I'm gonna, again, turn it counterclockwise again. Turn it so it's snug against the top, and same with the other one. That's all done. And I'm going to now take, and hopefully not knock my camera over, turn this, I got two more holes in this thing, I'm going to turn it so that the other two holes are above on the end here. Take my other coupler, feed that in, line everything up, turn my Screws kind of clockwise. You have no idea how good it feels to be doing all the stuff standing straight up as opposed to crawling around like I'm on the floor like I did earlier today. I've been at this since 9 o'clock, probably 9.30 this morning, I guess. And now it's about almost 5 in the afternoon. So this, this is a fairly labor-intensive process. It's not terribly difficult. Of course, part of it is I'm filming it. That kind of slows me down a bit. All right, now finally I'm going to take the last piece. Slide that in place, eventually, here we go. Undo these. Okay, so now I have built a 12 foot star rail. So that's the, so basically now I have skipped around all the way from page 46 to page 50. The only thing I haven't done is like a little cap that goes on the end. I just kind of work right here and grab it. So it's just a little little star-shaped cap on the end. I'm just gonna take it, stick it on the end here, pop it in. All right, I have now built the 12 foot star rail. Now what I need to do, I need to build two more rails. Um, effectively, you'll see step 11 is repeating the previous 10 steps I've done twice for the round rail assembly. It's exactly the same thing. I'm going to put the connectors in, Unscrew, or turn them counterclockwise to actually have them extend, and then make a 12 foot rail, stick a cap on the end, and I actually have a couple of caps for the uh, for the 38 millimeter tube caps for the two round rails. Um, they'll get those two done. Um, I also have to build my idler rail, which I assume is going to be about the same thing. If there's anything different, I'll film it. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that it's pretty much the same as everything else I'm building. We'll get that done, and then hopefully next time you see me. I'll have all my rails in place and ready to put them on the frame. We can see the end in sight. So I'll be back in just a bit. We are in the home stretch. You can see on the floor, I have got four rails that I put together. An idler rail, two smooth rails, and a star rail. Now we're gonna put those suckers in. So let's start with the star rail. So now I am in part three, task 11, Installing the front rails. So I have got a star rail and a round rail. I'm gonna put those both in. So let's start with the 12 foot star rail. Um, I need to remove a couple of screws on this guy. The top, let me take these off.
Oh, one more. I missed one. Okay, I'm going to use the Allen wrench. be a little easier to get at. One, two, and three. All right. Take it off. Put it off to the side. Now, I'm going to grab my star rail, which is conveniently on the outside here. And it is heavy. There we go. So, it's going to go on the top. So, I'm going to insert the end of this into the left side. And the right one, I'm going to drop into place. Drop it into place on the right side. So, I've got that all in place. Now, I've done it correctly. Well, very happily. Put all these screws back in place. Just be in place and lock it down. And it seems to be functioning quite nicely. So we got the star rail in place. Okay, let's go to the other front rail. This is the, uh, the quilt top rail. We'll put it in place next. So I am going to, let's see here. I need to remove there are two screws on the bottom I have to remove. So, hey, I've been on the floor all day today. What difference does it make? Let's see here. So here's the bottom. I've already got it undone. I need to undo this screw here. All right, let's come off. I can lift that top off. Let's grab one of our round rails. We'll do what we did with a star rail. Take this one. Same deal. One end goes in the hole in front. We drop the sprocket in there. And after all that, I get to put those screws back in. So let's give it a go. Put the top on. That sounds good. Two down, two to go. Now, because we have the idler rail, we've got to put that thing in as well. So, it's interesting. Something about this doesn't look right. I'm going to have to talk to somebody about this later. The reason I say that is. We got this bit. Oh, I see what happened. I'm not done yet. I need to There we go. I gotta pull the rail out to accommodate 21 foot for a uh, 21 foot stroke machine. I didn't see that in the instructions. I must have missed that detail. I'm gonna go in here. Let's see here. Come all the way. That's as far as she goes, so it brings a little bit more. The continuum had a little mark. This rail doesn't have a mark. I'm just going to pull it up just a wee bit more, and then I'm going to tighten it down. Bring that over. Let's see, to test this. So let's line this up. So. We've got about, and got a measuring stick next to me here. So if this in the frame, it's about two and three quarter inches. I bring this down to the other end. And I've got an obstacle here I gotta clear. way off. We got this side a bit too far. I put it here. This is about the first thing about this frame that has somewhat disappointed me. Just the whole way you kind of uh, extend extend the length. Two and three quarter, not quite. Push that a little more maybe.
a little bit, a bit too much, but I don't. Okay, that's two and three quarters at this end. Let's take it back down the other way. Oh, two and three quarters there, too. Jenna, we'll probably have to fine tune it a little bit, but it looks pretty good for now, so that's, I'm going to leave it at that. So let me tighten everything down here. Well, let's get the, uh, the take up rail in place, last rail. So, I apologize for that long detour. What am I going to take apart here? Let's see. I have to press a tab to open this thing. Oh, looky there. Isn't that cute? All right, we'll pick this up. Now, another pro tip that I've learned over the years, you'll notice I've got the machine way down at the far end. This is going to assist me in feeding it to the throat. So it's in. Let me do that. All right, and that's in place. Okay, uh, I was just reading ahead. I realized I kind of already jumped ahead a step. Step 13 was doing what I just did, getting the front rail to line up. But I'm still finishing up step 12. I've got the take up rail in place. I just got to put the crank in. So I have my handle and my crank. And I've got a couple of bolts, which I haven't quite opened all the way yet. Let me finish that here. Alrighty, so I have my my collar, which is in place, handrail collar, the 10 by 155, for this guy, which I haven't opened yet. All right, let's get this thing in place. We're just gonna screw it in the end here. Millimeter Allen wrench, which is conveniently on the table. Okay, we put the crank in. I right, am blocking the camera again. I've just taken my crank bolt, putting this in. All right, snap that down, Put that in. Seems to be functional to me. All right, we got the rails in place. Uh, we've got to do the bungee cords next. Let me figure out how to do that, and I'll return. All right, the bungee holder step looks to be pretty simple. I've got four of these things. They all install exactly the same. Here's one, and just all you do, there's a, a four, four, clamp, four, um, four of these things, two on each side. Just kind of push that in, feed the cord down and release, and it holds the bungee cord in place. I'm just going to pull down a little ways. Um, again, Janet will set these up the way she wants, but that's pretty simple. I've done one, I'll do the other three, and then for the most part, the frame is actually done with just a few little minor things I still have to do yet, so keep watching. All right, we are in the home stretch. One last thing to do at this point, and this is specific to QCT, and that's put the tablet mount in. This is the only difference for the QCT we had previously that we need to do for this machine. Um, this machine's got a much larger display than the old one did, and so there's a little mount that goes in here to hold the Windows tablet that controls the Quilt Motion software. Um, if we use the one that we had used on a previous machine, it's not going to raise the tablet high enough. This tablet's going to be, this display is going to be in the way and it's going to be a little awkward. So we have a larger mount that's going to have the tablet be higher up than it currently is. And so this was sent to us separately. So we can, we could, we could have used the old one. It just would have been a little awkward. So now I've taken off the little cap that covers all the, all the holes that kind of, kind of sets up where you put this, where you set the tablet. Now I'm going to put these all in place, there's four screws, okay, so the new mount is in place, this is the bracket that holds it here, fits in place, so I'll just take the wing nut off, feed it into the 
into the bracket and put the wing nut back in place. All right, now we got the bracket in place for the tablet. And conveniently on the table next to me here is the Windows tablet that we used to run this thing. This thing will slide the tablet in place, have it fit in place. And um, at this point now it's just a matter of wiring everything up and plugging everything in. So give me a minute to do that and then we will actually turn this thing on and see what happens. Okay, so we've got everything kind of hooked up here. I've got the power cord in. I have now, again, we have QCT, so we've got multiple things to plug in. If all you have is just your general machine, all you have is a machine to plug into the wall, and that's it. But we've got our, QC, our, um, our Cunique machine plugged in, the motor plate that's going to drive for quilt motion, and then the Windows tablet that I just put on. So I've got all plugged in. I've got my encoders I need to connect first. I've got the up the lower the upper encoder that's on the machine that plugs into the little purple jack here with a purple cord. So we'll plug that in. On the underside, the other encoder for the uh, the lower that's on the bottom. And so we're going to plug that in here. Um, and then I have to hook up a few things for QCT. I've got to plug in the connectivity for QCT from the machine. So that plugs into the motor plate on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, let's see here. That plugs in right there, I believe. Then I also need the connection from the tablet to QCT. And I'm going to be kind of fast and loose with the wires for now. We'll get it tidied up later. So this cord, let me just turn this a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's kind of hard to tell. But in fact, let me do this. Let me release the camera. I'm use for the shake. So this is what I'm connecting into QCT right now. So. I've got this long cord that plugs into the side of the motor plate, which is right here. All right, I like that click. And we do it a little different. We have a nice long cord. We plug this directly into the tablet. Um, if you look at the instructions for QCT, they may have you plug the tablet into the top of the machine, and then another cord comes out the back of the machine into the motor plate. Um, this is much more direct. It's a little easier to deal with. Again, I'm going to tidy up the cords later. All right, let's see what happens here. My function is to make sure that the machine works and that QCT at least recognizes the machine is there. So let's give this a try. Uh, I'm going to walk around the back. Well, be fancy, we'll put the light bar in. Okay, so. We're going to turn on the motor plate first. That sounds normal, that sound. Let's turn the machine on. I can't see what it's doing. I walk around in the front. I see a red light. I see where it gets it booting up. We got the Grace Company logo on the screen. Oh, there's an app ready. Loading. Huh, my first observation is that takes a whole lot longer to turn on than the old machine did. Tablet is starting. Okay, so we appear to be functional. We can move the needle, that's good. I can move it all four directions, so that's how the encoders are working. All right, so we're good there. Let's fire up QCT. Turn the tablet on. And just see what QCT has to do with this thing. All right, so we're up and running. Let's fire up QCT5. See if it recognizes that the machine is there. We'll probably have to tell it that it has a Cunique 21X Elite. There should be a setup for this. 
I no longer wish to simulate. I'm going to say no. The needle is up. Yes, it is. Carriage is to the center of the sewing area. It is. Motor firmware is current. All right, let's go into help. And I think it's settings. Okay. And we want to tell it what machine it is. Here we go to Kunik. If I change it, what are my options? It's a Kunik 21XL8. There it is. We'll select that. We'll do okay. And we'll okay there. Just to, be, just to be safe about it, I'm going to exit out. I'm going to restart it now that we know it's got the 21X on. And the needle is still up and the carriage is in the center. Okay, I think we're up and running. Just for grins, if I go into Panagraph and yeah, yeah, we got a few windows errors. Do it. Well, I'm just gonna randomly pick the safe, pick a safe area. All right, a very small safe area. If I select a pattern, I always like. I go with the beanie. I don't want the beanie. I like the teddy bear. I can find the teddy bear. I would do the cat ball. Okay, and I don't have bobbin in it, so I sh I'm not too concerned about it. If I were to, I've selected my pattern. I want to place as a single pattern. Yeah, I'll let it clip. Okay. And I'll do quilt. No, I want to place it first. Doing what it should be doing. It's sewing, it's tracing the pattern. I think we've got it functioning. Now obviously Janet's gonna hook this up. She's gonna do test stitches and all that stuff. There still could be issues. And certainly I don't have the cords anywhere close to being tidy, so they'll have to be cleaned up. But functionally, and of course the rail heights have to be adjusted too. There's all kinds of stuff that's gotta be done yet. But we seem to be functioning. You know, I'm gonna stop it. That idler rail's a little close. I think it's gotta be fixed. So, but anyway, it functions. So I'm just gonna exit out. And we'll get out of there. We'll close this down. Go to home. I don't wanna save my design. We'll exit out. And we actually have this silly thing running. So I hope this all made sense to you all. Uh, I'm gonna spend probably most of the next day editing all the footage I shot. You'll see a subset of it. But. I hope this answers any questions you might have. It's a neat little frame. I like it. And I'm sure Janet's going to enjoy it so much. So thank you all for your time, everyone.